I thought that the best way to show the capabilities of uh, the element would be just to start a new track and see where it takes us. So let's just see how this track is going to come together. I'm just going to start with the initial tone and look for a kick drum, which would be under the percussion category. Let's look for the first kick drum. And then I'm just going to lower it in pitch and shorten the decay time, make it a bit more snappy. Yeah, something like that, and maybe distort it a little bit, just to give it a little bit more crunch and graphic EQ for the kick. A bit more top. That sounds pretty good. So let's record that in. Great. And now we can move to a clap sound. And set the amount of reverb, not too wet, a little bit of bit pressure, just to give it some bite, maybe a little bit more top, and we can record that in. Great. And let's move on to some hi-hats. Now for the hi-hat, I want to use a sequenced hi-hat sound. So I'm going to use the built-in sequencer and just run a 16 pattern. And then I'm going to use the sequencer as a modulator to modulate the VCA. So when I lower third 16, it's going to just create this sort of level automation. And then I can record it in. Okay. So let's look for some bass sounds using the same existing sequence that I have from before. Okay, this one sounds pretty good to me. Let's record that one in. Let's look for like a pad sort of sound to play the chords. So I'm going to assign LFO3 to VCA so it will control the amplitude of the sound. And then I want to do an inverse sawtooth wave. See how that sounds in context. Cool, not bad. What I usually do is I try to build the full on loop, like the chorus, the hook loop, and then once I'm happy with that sort of make the arrangement. Um, let's take something more rhythmic. It would be good to make it a little bit more interesting and to cut through better. So I can try to distort it. Which is cool, let's see how that sounds. That's pretty good. Let's up the range to three octaves. There's a little bit too much modulation on the filter. As you can see, it's so easy to work on this thing because everything is right there and you can see everything right in front of you and just tweak it. And let's create a little inversion on the chord so it doesn't all sound the same. Maybe a little kind of 
pulsey stuff. Let's, see. Let's try to set up a kind of a quick arrangement. So that will be our intro. The full on thing, sort of. Okay, and then we can move to the verse. We can lose the clap. Bring the bass halfway through. Yeah, something like that. Cool. And maybe a double verse. Well, we have the full on bass here and maybe this sequence, this chord thing and the claps. And now we need something, a swoosh or something to bring us into the chorus. I'll you know, just create like a quick swoosh as it's so easy. Let's make some noise. Resonance, yeah, and just assign um, the filter envelope to the filter and raise the attack. Yeah, something simple like that should work. Something like that. Let's try something more on the snare. See what that does. definitely need something more aggressive so let's try a lead sound and make it like really low and that should do something see what that does Basically, so far we have an intro, a double verse, and a chorus. Let's see what we can do to the second verse. Maybe like a clicky sort of 80s sequencer. Okay, so now we need the middle eight. Let's do like a breakdown section. Okay, so we definitely need that sweep going back to the chorus. Let's see if we can get some other percussive sound. 
to keep the tension going on this breakdown section. That should be interesting. Let's just copy the base notes over. Okay. Bell sound. Okay, now we need the chorus back in. 